800 1 800 645 1100. The wrath of Andro during and after his South Florida strike. Good evening, I'm Barbara Sloan. And I'm John Hambrick. Not since 1926 has a hurricane hit Miami as ferociously as Hurricane Andrew. And few have been as bad anywhere in the country during this century. Many U.S. storms have killed more than eight people Andrew's known to have taken, but his legacy for damage, destruction, and widespread vexation may go unchallenged for years. Look at a typical scene in South Dade's Cutler Ridge section tonight. These were once houses and businesses, and in many cases, is men and women's dreams, now nightmares of rubble and debris. All over South Florida, you can see so many sad absurdities that Andrew left behind. That is a sailboat leaning against a light post in Coconut Grove. And think about the odds the hurricane could deposit this car atop a wall in such a precarious position, or could slam this powerboat into a seawall upright. Andrew's demolition strength, sustained winds of 140 miles per hour with gusts up to 168 when he roared ashore, was directed at any and all in his way. South Dade, including Kendall and Homestead, cannot possibly rebuild to normal anytime soon, especially not with at least a million South Floridians without electricity. How long can it take to restore full power? Days, weeks, months? Of course, Andrew did not recognize county lines. He was just as mean as you saw to Broward residents. Total South Florida damage will run into multi-billions. Andrew sure made his presence known here at Channel 6. The only reason that we're only broadcasting on Channel 27 is because the storm knocked our tower out. It also blew out a window in our general manager's office, sending water into our building. Our cars were not spared either, thanks to trees tossed around in our parking lot. Just a few more illustrations of the damage done by this very, very, very violent storm. Across South Florida, there are literally hundreds of thousands of stories to tell. Stories of a night of terror riding out the storm. Stories of loss from the people robbed of anything from a roof to a shopping center by Andrew's Fury. Channel 6 Action News reporter Dave Game joined his neighbors in a South Dade shelter riding out the storm. And today, he joins them in sharing the loss of a neighborhood. Dave is in our newsroom now after a long night and a longer day. Dave? Yeah, it really was. It's been a tremendous 24 hours. One that is hard to believe that you could live through and, and experience. You've seen this kind of thing happen to other people. You've covered stories happening to other people. But it takes a big different jump when it happens to you. As Hurricane Andrew boomed and rattled to his frenzied peak, the displaced people of South Dade huddled in the halls of Richmond Heights Middle School, blind to the damage Andrew was bringing to their neighborhood. Stunned when the force of the storm sent water pouring into the building's second floor, forcing people already worried about losing their homes to fight to save their shelter. Yeah, but it's bad. There's windows are breaking and coming through the vents and everything else. The doors are opening, right? The first hint of Andrew's destructive power came when the eye passed and families from the immediate neighborhood ran for the shelter. This man lost his home while he was inside. I never dreamed that a hurricane would be this hard. And I'll tell anybody, from now on, I'm not going to underestimate the force of me. People whispered, he's the exception. But with first light, they learned the awful truth. In Richmond Heights, Perrine, Cutler Ridge, and Point South, major destruction was the rule. A ride through the neighborhood, like a trip to a bombing zone. The path of the storm took it straight through the Perrine and Cutler Ridge area, devastating homes throughout the whole area. This one used to be mine. 25 years old, build of block to South Florida's strict building code, and it just wasn't enough. Because of the preparations that we had to make for reporting on the storm, my wife and I hadn't been able to do some of the things we wanted to. We couldn't board up windows, for example. But with the fury of this storm, it really didn't matter. My wife, Mary Ann, rode out the storm alone at home as our house came apart around her. Oh, half the roof is gone, and um, I mean, all the planning and all the plywood in the world is not going to help if your roof goes. But as bad as it looks, other people got far worse. Homes completely laid open to the elements along Eureka Drive, east of US-1. An entire neighborhood stripped by the wind, flooded by the rain, and barricaded by junk from a shopping center. There was hardly a home which escaped unscathed, hardly a business unaffected. Andrew destroys a warehouse, 
and takes with him the surplus memories of hundreds of families. This Home Depot celebrated its grand opening Thursday. Today, it's a virtual write-off. Not only have tens of thousands of people lost even temporarily a place to live, they've lost the familiar places to shop, to eat, even the trees, the things which made the place they live a neighborhood. Now, literally, gone with the wind. And it's hard to believe, but the pictures just can't begin to describe it, and words just fail. When you go through an area like this, it looks like it's just been completely bombed out. Nuclear warfare was the only thing, the first word that I coined, and I heard it again and again today. It's just everywhere. Back to you folks. Dave, did you get the feeling in some places, as I did while touring an area of South Dade this afternoon, or this morning, that uh, 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 being a bit disoriented by it all, oh. places look so different, street signs down. I really didn't know where I was in neighbors and neighborhoods that I'm normally familiar with. Absolutely, John. We couldn't. We were trying to find an address. We'd heard a report of something with some, some elderly people, and trying to find it, we just couldn't find any place. Uh, driving through the areas where where I shop, where where my wife and I would go to dinner, there was just nothing there. Dave, when you talk to your neighbors, what's the consensus? Are they planning on rebuilding? Or are they talking about leaving? I know people have to be terribly discouraged. Oh, rebuilding. There's nobody who believed that uh, being this far inland would expose us to this much danger. And everyone I talked with said that they'd never take another hurricane lightly again, that uh, you know those days are past after going through this. Uh, they'll rebuild, but they'll make sure they rebuild with hurricane shutters and everything else. Would your wife Marianne write out another one in a closet like she did? <laughs> I wouldn't let her. I understand. I understand a lot of people feel that way as well, that they wouldn't stay the next time. Were you hearing that today? I'm sorry, say again? Were you hearing a lot of people say they wouldn't stay? There the were a lot time. of people who said the next time it would go to a shelter. My sister-in-law, who just is a transplant here from uh, New Orleans, said that she would never again do it at home. The next time that the hurricane warning comes, she's into a shelter for good. Well, let's hope there's not a next time for a long, long time to come. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. The trail of devastation dots nearly the entire landscape in Dade. Hurricane Andrew came crashing ashore not far from the city of Homestead, close enough to leave the city nearly in ruins. Action News reporter Kathleen Corso has that story. It used to be the marker that told you you were in the hometown of the Homestead Air Force Base, but now that model fighter plane has been split in half across a road that divides City Hall, the least damaged building from the rest of the community. There are no more shopping centers, fast food restaurants, or mobile home parks in Homestead and Florida City. For all intents and purposes, there are no more homes either. While rescue crews searched for casualties, residents who remained in spite of evacuation orders were faced with their losses and the memory of the night they'd been through. Where were you last night? Uh, you must have been in, in a closet. You were in the closet, laying on top of my baby. You didn't evacuate? No, well, everything was filled. I mean, everywhere you go, they're filled. There ain't nowhere for anyone else to go left. I mean, everything's filled. You know, I don't know if our pictures can do justice to what happened here. As I walk through this area, it is just simply nothing like it was before. It is nothing like I think anybody has ever seen before. Over my shoulder, you see a family walking down the street. They were thrown out of their home by this storm like so many other people last night. They are walking down the street here now with the last few possessions that they have looking now, like many other people, for a place to live. For many, this storm has been a lesson in choices. Many admit the choice they made last night was wrong. I've been through them before, but I didn't expect it going to be like this. If I did, I'd have left. If I had to do it again, I'd leave. Kathleen Corso, Channel 6 Action News. Andrew may be through battering our area, but it is now taking aim at the Gulf Coast. Maria Gennaro will be along shortly with our full forecast. Now, you might want to grab a pencil because we've got some important information you need to know to best survive the days after Andrew. To begin with, in Dade County, there will be a curfew in effect from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. tomorrow. Police say there just isn't enough time to clear the roads and they want to make sure that everyone stays safe and off the roads after dark there is no curfew though in broward however in both counties tonight there is a boil water order in effect any water you get out of the taps you must boil for at least eight minutes that will make it suitable for drinking or cooking if you spot a broken gas line or suspect you uh, may see a, a gas leak near your home we have two numbers for you to get in touch with people's gas in miami dial 573 3820 in either Dade or Broward, 945-7543. We've also got a number for FPNL. If you see any downed power lines, and there are plenty of them, as we've indicated, dial 442-8770. Remember, 
However, do not touch any fallen or down line. Now, we're going to repeat all of these numbers for you a little bit later on in the program and also take a look at what's closed around town tomorrow. Barbara?